Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitemout.com and P.L. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, March 12th, March, not March 12th, 2021. And this is our weekly video. We do these every week. We take a look at last week's eBay auction results, what happened over on Catawiki. We'll talk a bit about what's going on over on Live Auctioneers. Uh, as you all know, the uh, Asia Week starts in a few days, and there's some great catalogs. We've got them up over on the on our Bitemout site in the uh uh, in the little drop-down black box on the on the homepage, and go and look up uh, different different things on there. There's about 650 catalogs on there now. But one of the things I wanted to get into today quickly is uh, this: uh, the site is done. Okay, the site is not live yet, so if you go looking for it, you won't find it. It's going to be uh, physically launched. They have to change some. Uh, um, uh, 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 website uh, settings so that it'll be made public, but it's it's pretty well, um, it's all done. The translation issue was finally worked out after hours and hours and hours and hours of work so that this all works and integrates, and we'll be doing some videos um, uh, right before it launches so that when you come to the site, you'll be able to get some uh, basic instructions on, you know, answer your questions, how to set up your own account, how to set up a vendor account, how to create listings, and some of the pretty cool features that are in there as far as creating your own listings go and of course uh, how the content can be shared on your on your facebook channel or wherever you want whatever you want to do with it we've left it so that all of you will be able to to use this unlike other other sites out there where you sell things you can say who you are you can put a you can put a link on the on the on this on your account to your own website and uh, create some uh, activity for yourself i think it's a, a pretty great setup and uh, as you can see here, uh, we've got some instructional pages on what you can do here. And, and we go through all the various uh, elements of the site and writing. And then we'll have videos added, of course, to uh, help folks uh, get through it. And uh, as you can see, it's the language, the language aspect is working fine. Uh, we have uh, five languages on here, Italian, uh, 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 was it Italian, Dutch, French, uh, Spanish, German, and uh, Chinese, as well as English, of course. And uh, here's uh, here's just how the pages will the home page will look, for example, when it's translated. But uh, we'll check it out. We'll uh, we'll send out an email to everybody uh, when, as soon as it's launched and the videos are ready. So it'll be it is going to be next week. Um, <laughs> if something else doesn't go crazy, but it, it's it's been a bit of a challenge. All right. So that's that. And uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was I'm in New Hampshire right now. I'm not at the, in the office, and. Um, as we did last time um, we were here, uh, one of our dogs, Skipper, came in and uh, made himself known. And I said, we have another dog. And they'll turn the camera on because she, she'll be very upset if she's not shared. Um, this is April. And uh, she, she, this, is, this is April in her favorite position, which is uh, sleeping and snoozing. Hi, April. Yeah, <laughs> that's her. And uh, she just came in from a little bit of an outing outside on the porch over here. Uh, there's still a lot of snow up in the mountains. Uh, but it's 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 a beautiful day today here. It's 50 degrees and uh, quite nice, uh, right? But uh, April's going to keep an eye on me while I do my work here today. All righty. Now, a couple of things. Um, uh, on the home page, if, you, if anybody noticed, uh, if you've been on the home page in the last few days, you've noticed that there were some listings on there from sales that were coming up on the global pages, and I wanted to go over them because some of them did quite well. Um, one, of the, one, of the, one of them was this. This was a really interesting uh, Japanese uh, lacquered uh, Edo to Meiji period uh, jar with a cover. It's missing its finial. It was missing its finial. So if it, if it looks a little funny, that's why. It just doesn't have its finial on top. But one of the things that was very interesting about this jar, and this was a big jar. It was 83 centimeters or about two and a half feet tall, um, um, a little over two and a half feet tall. It, has these, it had these porcelain knobs, uh, decorated porcelains applied to the uh, the, the, the neck and shoulders and so forth all the way around one of the one of these uh, larger ones is missing on the other side but it's a really interesting looking pot and I love the uh, the hawk on it and I like the way the base was done and so forth and apparently a lot of people like this the I've had these had before a number of years ago we sold a, a big blue and white example of these with children playing go on it it was even bigger than this as I recall um, to the to the PBD Museum about 20 years ago 
Um, it was a very unusual one. It came out of a, an estate in Gloucester, Massachusetts. Uh, but this is another one that came along, and it did quite well. It brought 1,500 euros. It was estimated at 500 to 1,000 euros, which I think is, was low, but that's okay. And uh, with the buyer's premium, it came in at around $2,2200. But a very unusual pot really unusual and and I've never seen one in, in, in years and years and years and decades uh, one with these porcelain knobs on it all right I think they're just terrific all right now over here this is another thing that's coming up in a couple of weeks at the Austrian uh, rug company they have a, a very good uh, rug auction coming up if you're in the Central Asian and Chinese carpets um, Afghanistan Turkmenistan Uzbekistan um, and so forth uh, Nepal um, is this Osmolik, which is a saddle, it's a saddlebag face, really. It was meant to go on the, on, uh, mounted on a, on a camel for moving things. So it's a, like a big bag, like a big, the front end of a big cattle, uh, saddlebag. But anyway, it's about, it's not, these are not enormous. These are not carpet size. These are quite small. This was probably three or four feet long, but it's an early one. First half of the 19th century. Uh, these are quite rare in this pattern and in these colors. Uh, it's estimated at uh, eight to twelve thousand euros with a four thousand euro uh, uh, opening bid, but it's quite a thing, and it's three foot eleven by two foot four. All right, now over here to Heinemann's. Leslie Heinemann's got a sale coming up in twelve days, so you have plenty of time to go look. Um, is this? Uh, there's some very nice Chinese things in this sale, including this carved wooden and lacquered Buddha head. Very interesting. Typically, you see these lacquered Buddha heads and so forth. They're, they're often associated with the Song Dynasty. The, um, the facial features are a little bit more subdued, a little smoother, not quite as pronounced as on this. But this is a nice old head. This is a really nice old head. I like it a lot. And it's estimated modestly at $700 to $900. Um, as I said, it's going to be sold in about about a week and week and a half or so. And uh, Heinemann's also has this. They have a very lovely late nineteenth century watercolor uh, uh, of a of a screen with a with a with a with a, uh, a scroll table in the foreground and so forth, and a uh, late nineteenth century celadon base with those that brown dressing around the top. All right, but very nicely done, beautifully done with a uh, 500 to 700 dollar estimate, which seems reasonable. It's a it's a 15 to 17 inch painting, so it's pretty good size. And uh, as you all of you know, Rob Michaels is sale, has a two day sale coming up starting tomorrow um, over in Bruges in, in Belgium, and uh, he's got some very nice examples. We've had a lot of inquiries this week and last week about the. Uh, about some of the auto items on the uh, uh, on the preview assistant uh, service on bid amount, people wanting to know what we thought of the pieces and and uh, so forth, and uh, we we told them uh, the, the highs and lows. Some pieces we like a lot better than others, obviously, but that's a matter of personal taste. Taste, but I like I overall it's it's a very fine sale, for, and there's even some very lovely Japanese things in there, um, including that screen we talked about last week. And we'll see how that goes. When we'll cover it, we'll do a quick review of it. We'll do a video when it when it's over. We're also going to try and get a, an auction, auction uh, videos out next week about the uh, uh, Asia Week auction preview. Uh, we didn't have the time last week because we were involved with the website getting it done. All right. And then also coming up, this is in a couple of days over in uh, in the UK at Hannams. Um, this is really funny. They have a, a very fine Cantonese uh, ivory tea. Uh, uh, card case that's being sold um, with a, a crazy low estimate. Um, so it, what it means is, is that the, the reserve on this is about 60, 70 bucks. But this is a spectacularly uh, well done one. Um, a month or so ago, you remember, we covered one of these very fine Cantonese ivory boxes and it brought about $1,100 or $1,300 or something. Um, uh, this one is, they've got estimated, and I don't know why, I think they're just being very, very, you know, friendly to the bidders, 60 to 80 uh, pound estimate. Uh, I expected to bring 700 to 1,000 anyway, and it's the sale is in basically two days and 15 hours from now. So uh, on on Monday, March 15th, um, if you're an ivory buyer, uh, you might want to check that out. It's a nice looking one. All right, and that's about it. There's some other good things on the global pages that we added this week. We added quite a few Japanese things. Um, there wasn't a lot of new Chinese stuff that came on, but there was a lot of Japanese material that turned up. So if you're a Japanese buyer, and also some new, uh, some very nice uh, Central Asian and Chinese carpets and textiles. So uh, check the check the pages out. Um, uh, one of the pages, of the, the notification that we updated the page, by the way, we forgot to update uh, that we had up, update the page that tells you we've updated the site. So um, it was it had the wrong time on it. We updated we updated the pages uh, three times this week. 
All right, now, uh, let's see what's going on over here. Uh, this is on the newsletter page from last week. There were some pretty good results. There were some interesting things that did quite well. Uh, one of the things is uh, this, this very nice comp compressed form bottle vase with a flambe glaze on it. It was a late Ching example, but very nicely decorated. Um, there's a top view of it. Let's see if we can get the page to load here. There we go. There's another view of it. Uh, here's the bottom, very typical, unglazed, recessed. You can see where the uh, glaze ran over and they chipped it out a little bit so that it would stand flat. When you see these areas that are chipped out and you stand them up, they tend to stand nice and level. They would, they would chip away any extra glaze that ran down. Uh, on the earlier, on, it's funny, on the early, early examples, this wasn't a problem. But on the later uh, Qing examples, early Republic bases, uh, you'll often find the glaze overruns the foot. <clears throat> and, it, and they have to sort of yank it off and then chip it away to clean it up so it will stand straight, which this one does just fine. There you go. And uh, this did pretty well. It brought $479, which wasn't bad at all. It was about eight inches uh, or so tall, uh, uh, roughly. All right, now on to this. This did well. This was the uh, tea preparation, uh, teaware Chinese export painting that I talked about last week because I liked it so much. I thought the quality was excellent. And uh, the uh, scene was interesting. And the tea, of course, is, is you know, a, a primary, one of the primary agricultural products of China, especially during the uh, early uh, 19th century that when this was done. This was probably painted around 1800 to 1820, uh, but very, very nice quality, all framed and matted, ready to go. It's probably a two or three hundred dollar frame easily all by itself. And uh, the painting did fine. It ended up selling for seven hundred and sixty dollars, which I think is a good buy. Uh, these are very, very nice. We've seen them in the past. Um, there was a, a couple that sold last week that went for a bargain. Somebody got two of these for about seven or eight hundred. Uh, and uh, in the past, we've seen them sell for a thousand to fifteen hundred. It all depends on the day. All right. Now over to this, the uh, the uh, Chinese silver uh, vases. These were about eight inches tall, as I recall. Very nicely done. They had these uh, lotus tip uh, 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 framing around it and this nicely done stippled ground and this high relief polish work all over it. Very, very attractive pair. And somebody think I think got a fairly nice buy, $760 for the pair of them. These are early, uh, probably Republic examples, but early Republic, very nicely done from a seller in uh, Hilton, New York had it. And, and I'm upstate artifacts. Uh, I don't know, I don't know them, uh, but they, they, these were very nicely done and they were well photographed, which is very important. And then this, the Dragon Festival boat. This is a real nifty piece of folk art. And I, I, mean, I featured it on the, on the site last week just because I love this kind of thing. Um, it's, it's, it's something that a local artist would have done, on, on obviously, on an oval board. This is not a big painting. Um, this thing was, uh, what was it? It was eight inches long. These are not enormous. You sometimes see them in Victorian frames. You'll see them in those old, very ornate Victorian frames. People will, was sort of a thing that you would put them in those when they got here and, um, um, and just have a very simple mat cut, cut to fit around it. This was a nice one of the Dragon Festival boat, um, beautifully done. It was not done in circa 1800. It was done later. Uh, this was probably done about 1880 or so, but it doesn't matter. It was a nice one. And it went, I think, very reasonably, $160 for a very nice, and it looks untouched. Nobody's touched this. Nobody's cleaned it. Nobody's messed with it. And if you bought it out there, leave it alone. Don't do anything to it. Don't try to clean it. Don't have someone clean it. The surface is, is terrific on that. I liked it a great deal. And uh, then the robe, this is the uh, dragon roundel robe that we talked about. It was up to about $4,000 when it got onto the newsletter page last week. And I mentioned that these uh, roundels often by themselves, just in a, on, a, on a, you know, with a new back on them, they would cut them out of these robes and these would sell for anywhere from $1,000 to $1,500 a piece. This one had five of them on it, plus nice roundels on the sleeves and then this very gentle wave pattern. Nice looking skirt on black. This is an informal jacket, of course. Very nicely done. Sold for $6,100 because it's the whole package right there. It's all complete and ready to go. Uh, very, very attractive piece. This was from a seller in Boca Raton, Florida. Uh, nice looking thing. And then over here to this, Josh uh, Chamberlain, uh, uh, Juice1499. Had, as many of you know, he had a sale that closed out earlier in the week, and uh, some of the things did very, very well. And one of them was this, this late Ming, possibly early Qing or transitional. It's hard to tell. It looks Ming, the, the brushwork and the colors and so forth. Nice old painting, no matter what, you know whether it's uh, from 1570 or 1640. Hard to tell, but beautifully done. 
beautifully done. Uh, it wasn't, you know, it had a little bit of damage here and there and all that. It was signed. And um, in the end, it brought $5,100. The mount on it is not original. It was remounted at some point in its life, which is very typical of these, these, these paintings. They're often remounted. All right, now, so don't let that fool you. Somebody, somebody had asked me a while ago about another painting, and they said the painting looks like it's 17th century, but the, the mount looks brand, brand new or 20th century. And I said, well, because it is 20th century, uh, often the mounts get frayed and, and the silk um, that they're on to will, will become a little fra frail, and they'll just, out of, out of, just to be safe, they'll move it onto a new mount so it's, it's, it's more securely uh, protected. All right, now on to this. This was something else Josh had, and we've seen these before, these side-handled chocolate pots. This was a nice one, though. It was very well done, had a little bit of wear of gilt around here. Um, there was one a few months ago. That I think it brought three or 4000 It was a little fancier, but this is still a good one. Um, and uh, it ended up selling for $1,505. There it is. Uh, but it was a nice export example. You don't see them very often. You're more likely to find them in Europe than you are in the United States, especially in Northern Europe. And then on to this, this was that big Famille Rose vase with the blue ground. And uh, most of these in this style are tend to be smaller. They were very, this particular, in this particular color palette and in this design, this sort of Cantonese design, uh, were more typical of um, uh, pit pots in the, in, the, in the 10 to 13 or 14 inch range, maybe 15 inches, but rarely bigger than that. This is a big one. This thing was over two feet tall. Um, very nicely done. He dated it as circa 1900. I think it was a little older than that, maybe uh, by a few, by quite a few years. Um, not 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 18th century, but earlier than that, judging by the foot rim and um, the uh, the uh, the style of the decoration, the quality of the decoration. But it was very very nice. Sold for 1,235 dollars, um, and it was in beautiful condition. No cracks, hairlines. Okay, there was a tiny nick on the rim um, and that sort of thing, but but nothing else. But a very, very nice example. And then over on to this page is another ivory case. Uh, this is sort of along the lines of the one that we were just talking about that's coming up in a sale in a few days. And it sold for about almost $500, but it's not quite as finely done. All, the, these boxes were, were, were sold based on the fineness of the carving. Now, when they were made, extremely fine examples were expensive, and, and the, the finest ones were considerably more money than the less finely done. This was sort of a, a B or B plus example, very nicely done. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's not quite as fine as the other one. Let's uh, look at this one, and then there it is. This one, there is it. This one is finer. Um, the way the willows are done and the trees and all that are done, but it's still a very nice example. All right, now um, back over to here. All right, but this one is uh, uh, di did pretty well on top. Anyway, it brought four hundred and ten dollars, and this was from a, a seller over in the UK in uh, Orpington. Uh, nice looking box. All right, I, I you know there are people out there. It's interesting. There are people out there that have huge collections of these uh, card cases and ivory carvings uh, as well, um, because uh, the, the, some of the work on them was just so unbelievably fine. Um, and uh, most of it was made for the export market. It was it was a very popular material to carve for the China trade. All right, now um, over on the uh, Katawiki side of things, things did pretty well. Also, they had a good week. They had this this very nice Kangxi period dish. It was about nine inches in diameter, but very nicely done, very cleanly done, nice um, uh, underglazed blue and then filled in with enamels. And you have these, I love the way they use the balustrades as points going into these cartouches with the phoenix flying over. And you see the, the, just the edge of a balustrade with a flower under it and so forth. And then the basket of flowers in the center. Nice looking dish, uh, about eight inches, as I said, in diameter, sold for 390 euros, but a good looking piece. And then over to what's coming up this week. Uh, there's a number of good things that we found already. We'll add more to the newsletter page as we go along, uh, if you're not familiar with, the, with that part of our site. Um, this is, uh, let's see, we're going to get over here. Bang, this. This is closing in a few days, and it's on there right now. This is this very, very nice Japanese uh, bit of Shibayama ware that's selling uh, with silver, a silver-mounted body, but nice enameling all up through... Uh, here, up around the top, over the shoulder, the dragons are very nicely done. There's five dragons on this with a, it looks like an osprey or a hawk on the top.
but very, very attractive. This is a nice, nice example and uh, very elegant. It's up to $2,750. It's got nine hours to go. It closes later on today. Um, let's see, how tall was this thing? This was pretty good size, as I recall. Uh, if we can get the page to slide down. Um, yeah, it was a foot tall, 13 inches tall. It was 13 inches tall. Most, a lot of Shibuyama pieces tend to be seven or eight inches. This is a particularly big one, which makes it unusual. I suspect it'll go up another couple of thousand, and we'll check back. And then um, uh, Shangri-La guys have this up. If you're a hatch or cargo collector, um, you want to check their sale out uh, that's ending in a few days. Uh, they have one of this, uh, one of the uh, uh, Red Cliff Story poem uh, bowls. Uh, this was uh, the Hatcher Cargo was auctioned by Christie's many, many years ago when a lot of good collections have Hatcher Cargo pieces in it. And as you can see, this has uh, lots of script on it and uh, the figures and all that. And it's up to $302. It closes on Sunday. And then uh, this is uh, on there right now. It'll be on eBay this week on the newsletter pages. It's very nice Chinese late 18th century cider jug. But this is a particularly fine one. Um, uh, they made these in, in a few different qualities, but this one has a very, very nice, uh, very finely detailed uh, edging around it. And you have scrolls and vines, this, this nifty little gold foo lion staring up at you. It's got a tiny nick on the spout. You can barely see it, but uh, other than that, it looks awfully good. And uh, also this, uh, what's, that, what's that piece up to? I didn't, hold on a second. Uh, it is up to $5. It closes in nine days. So this, this just went up uh, probably last night. Uh, a seller uh, that we, we found has some very nice Japanese pieces um, um, this week. And one of them is uh, one of these uh, Japanese uh, abalone shell satsuma pieces um, uh, with the mortals all over it. Uh, they did this type of bowl um, with a variety of patterns. Um, and, and, the, and the better ones tend to have a mortals with lots of figures on them so that the facial expressions are all a little bit different. And they often use beautiful landscapes uh, uh, to place them into. And then the, they, they do sort of creative things with the uh, with the scrolling part of the shell. And then they use the traditional diaper patterns around the outside uh, of it and so forth. These are these are quite nice. Um, we had we had one of these a number of years ago. It did, did fine. It is good size. This is almost 15 inches in size. This is not a small uh, like a sauce dish or something. This is like a, char a platter. Uh, this is a big thing. It's just a hair at 14 and a half inches in width. It's good size. And it's up to $1,140, expected to go up another 1000 or so, I suspect, 800 to to 1000 And also a pair of these uh, are coming up um, on uh, 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 closing uh, later this week. They close um, in, in nine days. And there's a pair of these Wanli bowls, and they're rather nice. They both have that the molded decoration in the bodies, you can see, uh, all this nice mold work around the cavetto and around the, around the flattened, diverted rim. And uh, very nice. These these would be nice nice to have together. The bidding is only up. It's got one bid, twenty eight dollars. They should bring uh, three fifty to five hundred somewhere in there when it's all done. Maybe a little more. Uh, but beautifully decorated. Very nice examples. And um, those those will be in the newsletter this week. Also, so there's a lot going on. And um, as I said, we got the website done, and uh, things. <laughs> <laughs> working out well. The dogs are here. The weather's nice. It's 50 here today in the mountains. Very warm, sort of that nice March weather. And um, thanks for watching. If you enjoy the video, subscribe, leave a uh, leave a comment, come over to bitamount.com and check out the newsletter page, see what we found on eBay and Katawiki each week. Uh, these are the, the things that you're going to find down there are objects that we've seen and uh, think they look pretty good to us and we put them on there. We don't just let, as you know, we don't just put everything that turns up on eBay on the newsletter page. Um, uh, we have to go through and dig out the stuff we like, uh, the stuff that looks best to us. Okay. All right. Have a wonderful week at weekend and, uh, look forward to, uh, sending you all the, uh, um, the, the, the launch information on the new website. And I do hope you enjoy it. And, uh, it's been, it's been a lot of work. All right, but it's done. All right. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.